What up, Kelvin? Hi, my housemates have negative energy due to the poisonous food they eat. They're always commenting on my healthy food. How do I stop energy transfer? Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I feel I feel the same way when I go outside and it comes down to self-love and awareness and like you want to be healthy you love yourself you know all the ways that you're poisoning yourself and they don't they still don't and that's why you will you will be triggering for them just by breathing because a healthy man's energy field is triggering for the unhealthy man's energy field. So yeah, they're commenting on your healthy food probably in ways to make you like feel bad that you're actually taking care of yourself or some stuff like that. While it's actually, it's denial or lack of awareness. And how do you stop energy transfer? <laughs> Well, you maybe won't be able to change them ever. And the way to stop energy transfer is within yourself. It's how you perceive the energy transfer. Like, I don't think that we can ever stop it but what we can do is learn how to have a better relationship to it in a sense of realizing that everyone is on, on their own path and if they are still stuck in these addictive ways and poisonous ways and you can just be an example can you change your housemates? <laughs> Can you move out? Can you... I don't know, I don't know. They're always commenting on your healthy food. Mm. Maybe you are very different. Maybe you are seeking approval from them that you that it's okay to eat healthier and then their comments make you you invest a lot into their opinion maybe that's a problem also that you value what they say too much and you take it personally too much when they make fun of your healthy food because then it's it's probably that there's more of them than there is one of you and then you feel overwhelmed and you feel you might be out of your mind because there's more of them like maybe they know better or something like that and it's always going to be like that because most of society is sick most of society eats very unhealthy and if you eat healthy and you want to love yourself that's a radical act of triggering everyone and then if there's more of them telling you what 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 uh, what the fuck are you doing Kelvin come on let's grab let's grab some KFC or whatever and you're like come on guys I got my own thing I made here it could be some type of bully energy true they've always tried to get me to eat their food but I said no so what I do now is distance myself from them as even five minutes with them is too much that tends to happen that tends to happen when that happened I'll give you an example that happened to me I used to smoke a lot of weed and drink a lot of alcohol and go out and you know all the Hollywood clubbing and gangster stuff um and right now for a long time i'm not living in the same city that i lived with with that group of people 
And when I come back and we hang out, it's very difficult for me. I have these nostalgic thoughts of what we used to be and how we used to hang out together and we were homies and all these nice things. And I crave those moments because I crave being accepted and, you know, everyone does the same thing that I do. But I've been so drastically different with my diet and what I focus on in my life that when I go back, it's very f difficult for me to spend a lot of time with them. Because they're depending on what food you eat and what you watch and if you're addicted to certain things your breathing is different your pace is erratic your nervous system is is and it's it's difficult like you say even five minutes with them I read something the other day that said like 2022 is the year where it where it's become the most apparent that you can be in the same room with somebody like a, a few feet away from somebody but be in a totally different world than them and that's what's happening that's what's happening is you can feel the difference you can feel the difference and misery loves company and also love loves company like birds of a feather flock together and all these things so you are disrupting their way of life and they are disrupting your way of life on a fundamental level because maybe if it's like i can ask you this if if you put the food away are there any other areas where you actually have common interests that you can actually speak about and do certain things together that has nothing to do with food because that could be like one aspect where you can say okay we don't have to eat the same foods but we can do these things together but if there is no such thing then there is going to be very little ba um, base of community But I understand. None. They are obsessed with TV, game shows, alcohol, cigarettes, gossip, etc. Yeah. <laughs> that tends to go like that. Yeah. These are all mostly distractions. Like alcohol is poison, cigarettes are poison, gossip is, is the worst thing ever. TV could be good, but it depends what you're watching. Game shows also, I don't know. But yeah, something tells me that even that that you are here on this live, that you don't resonate with any of that. Because <laughs> there is a certain um, population of people that actually come on this live and stay. <laughs> and this, this already tells me a lot. Um, so yeah, you want to be better, you want to be healthier, you want to love yourself, you want to resolve trauma. You want to resolve old ways, old patterns. You want to get on with your life, change, transform, become stronger, healthier, thrive. And they want to stay pacified and under a blanket of comfort and familiarity. And yeah, yeah, it's difficult. I think you, I think you should think of some ways where you can either change your surroundings or hmm, if there's more of them and you don't see any any hope of a transformation they have nothing to talk about they are they are what I call existers they just ex exist in life I'm living thriving one of them looks spiritually dead yeah I know what you mean I know what you mean. Yeah, most of society is like that. Just, you know, just turning the wheel, just going through the motion of every single day to get to the next one, to get to the next one, to get to the next one. Not 
here to with no purpose, with no passion. And I understand why it's like that. The system is made to first traumatize you and then give you solutions in forms of alcohol, TV, game shows. I understand all of that, then, all of those things. I've also been in in situations and phases of my life where I was um, drowning my pain. And what you have to understand is that these people are in a lot of pain that they don't, they're not confronting. So they, they are actually very, very scared, very hurt by somebody or something and they can't stop. They have to keep going because if they stop and look at themselves, they might just die of shock of how much they've been sort of, you know, like piling under the carpet. So that's why you numb yourself with alcohol, with cigarettes, with TV game shows is to keep going, keep going. No, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Da -da -da. Drink, smoke, everything's fine. Da -da -da. Drink, smoke. Let's go. Let's go eat, eat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then one day before you die, you suddenly go for the first time. You sit and you settle all your energy and you go, you take a deep breath and then you look back at your life and it's all b one big haze, one big coma of next thing and next thing and next thing and next thing. And then you sort of go and, oh my God, I wasn't actually aware of my life at all. So, yeah, it's difficult because health is not the norm. Being like really healthy by your choices of herbal tea, clean food, make your own food, um, fasting, hydration, detox, exercise, all these things that you don't need pharmacy, you don't need vaccines, you don't need somebody leading you by the hand. All these things are not promoted and it's more of a norm to be addicted and sick and if you're healthy, you're somewhat of a fucking shock in society. Like, what is this? Look at this person. He's not scared. Like, if you're just walking down, if you're walking down the street with your posture up and your eyes are not like, if you're not scared of every single person because they might have whatever it is today that's trending. And if you walk like you, like you have self-worth, not cocky, like, Fuck me, I'm the best guy ever, or whatever. Just, I love myself. Self-love is, is the crime right now. In every shape or form. And people are gonna... People are gonna want to destroy that. Because it's more easy to destroy positivity and drown with just their molasses and swamp of heaviness. It's easier to just drown collectively the one person that's actually loving themselves than it is to look at yourself and why why am I why can't I be like that? But you can, but it requires dumping alcohol, it requires dumping cigarettes, it requires crying for two months every single day, because I've been all through all of that bullshit. It requires cleaning out your closet, changing all your habits, changing all your diet, and it's a year-long process. And I can't tell you how, my, how many uh, tears I've shed and uh, the friends that I've lost and family that has wanted to gouge my eyes out because I wanted to change. I wanted to change my family um, lineage, which was addiction, which was self-hate, self-sabotage not listening to your inner voice and i don't give a fuck if you're a man or a woman if you don't cry you won't get up you won't resolve trauma i'm not a fucking brick you know like oh men need to be stoic and not show emotions like fuck all of you like we're not bricks if you want to be a brick you should have reincarnated as a brick not as a human being that's here to feel and experience life and then people think that's the norm because they see in movies no feelings i am strong man no feelings no sensation i only feel brick and then you you have to whenever you feel whatever it is 
from your childhood because you were a child once and all these bricks were children once and were and, and are actually children right now whenever you want to feel whatever it is you say no let's go drink no let's gossip no let's smoke just distract yourself from your own life and that's what's happening and yes you yeah i feel sorry for the society i feel sorry for in the same routine daily like you say same routine daily same food music tv alcohol they hate people that have any success yep <coughs> yep yep that's that's the truth that's the that's the truth and then you you you're you're like a sh you're like a flashlight you're gonna be a flashlight they're living in darkness they're living in 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 a swamp that they created to get away from this pain that they're carrying and when you come with your fruits organic uh, alkaline dr sabi diet i don't know what what healthy food there is for you but whatever it is it's better than what they're doing obviously that food is gonna be and that it's not even about the food it's about you it's about your state of mind. It's about your state of emotions. It's about the fact that you love yourself. That you say no to the things that they say yes to. That you resist. And that shines a light. And that light is like, you know, like, like a vampire. Like a fucking vampire when the sun comes. Like, shut the blinders. Fuck that. And that's why they're gonna blame you. That's why they're gonna try to per prosecute you and liquidate you and make fun of you. Because that's, that's the only thing. People, in one sense, there's more... Um, the addictions have taken over. Like you say, this one of them looks spiritually dead. That's because the, the process of trauma is a process of fragmentation when you feel pain that you can't resolve you take that part of your yourself and you sort of break it off your body and you just keep it like in your energy field somewhere around you just okay i'm gonna put this in a drawer i'm gonna put this in a drawer and the more that you do that the less you are actually spiritually in the body in 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 the present moment being able to face whatever is in front of you and then somebody and then Kelvin comes along and says hey hey man you're not actually here you're over here and he's like no 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 we're not we're, we don't talk about that that's the forbidden drawer and then let's go drink and then let's watch TV let's gossip and yeah these things can be reversed everything can be reversed these people can become spiritually alive again but for some it's not possible for some it's not possible for some it's it's it is what it is because the pain of reverting and facing the trauma could be so great that they could die from that pain of facing it for for for, for the first time in their life it's almost like if you took a, a person, I, I think about that with my parents, like my parents, they both uh, smoke a lot, they drink a lot, they eat very poor, like, and that's been going on for years. And they're not even, they're not facing all the frustration in their life. They are not speaking about things. They're very heavy energetically. And I think that I, if it's almost as if you came to them and if you took a person's cigarettes away from them and alcohol and food and ask them questions about their trauma all at once that that sort of thing can kill a person because you're dependent on that nicotine hit to sort of calm you down you have you have uh taught your nervous system that without it you are a wreck and if too many of these things you take away from them, it's such a withdrawal symptom and so much detox happens from all the previous things, unhealthy things that people have been eating. And most people on earth have so much, so much clogged up unprocessed foods in their colon. The lymph nodes are stuck. The hair is 
gunked up with mucus, you can't breathe, the thyroid is locked up with... And if you suddenly remove all these things and people can do, suddenly they feel all the emotions from when they were five, people can die of that. And in a sense, you can't do anything. It's, it's, you, you, you are fighting in, in an uphill battle. Where they're just gonna laugh about it. They're just gonna be, oh, look at Kelvin over there. And <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, it's not a fair battle because you're not, you're not even coming from the same place. They are stuck in a routine. Yeah, it's loops. What you say, stuck in a routine. It's a mind loop. It's sort of stuck, they're stuck in limbo. Every time they even want to do something different, they, they have each other to pull each other down. If one of them thinks of something, the other two are going to be, Oh, you're not going to become like Kelvin, or whatever, or are you becoming a hell hippie as well? Come on, brother. Let's go and smoke a spliff and talk about bitches and money and whatever. Or gossip about Kelvin, or... or Let's watch Jackass or whatever. I watched the new Jackass the other day. I thought I was going to enjoy it. And it was it was horrendous. It was 50-year-old people kicking each other in the balls. And I was like, oh my god, I actually enjoyed this at one point in my life. People change. And it's good to change. It's not... It's not the... The... the the survival of the fittest, like the strongest, the bulkiest, and the most brick. It's who can adapt, who can change, who can flex, and f who can bend and then snap back. Who can bend and then snap back. Those are the ones that will survive. And resolve past trauma and accept things. Even the smell of food makes me sick. Yeah, I know, man. The third guy, I hardly see him, they constantly use him as a bank or to disturb him. <laughs> yeah, brother, I think you need to get out. I think you need to get out. It's making you sick. I think it's... I think that that presence is... If there's three of them... Mm -hmm. I had these I had these things with, with, with my friends, with my so-called friends, was that when there was two or three of them... There was nothing I could say, because the group mentality takes over, it's almost like an, an, a different entity. But if sometimes I was to get one-on-one -on -one time with some of them, I actually get to do yoga with some of them, go for walks, get to, to get them more to soften, to soften up, and then one of the guys talked about their, his childhood and his father not being there, and then he, one, one of the times we went into the city, just the two of us, and after two hours of him being with me, he, he came to me and said, like, wow, it, I, I, I never could tell, but it really makes a difference of who, who, who is next to you. And I was like, yeah, man. And then we come back home, and he goes, and then the, the other two or three guys come back, and he becomes an asshole towards me, instantly, because... The reputation is at stake. You can't be a little bitch around other bros. You can't. You have to. It's all brick. It's brick city, goddammit. Everyone is, a, is an insensitive brick. And if you show at least a little bit of... Nah, it's like... It's, it has to be prison. You know how it is in... How they say it's in prison? If you show a little bit of weakness, you get fucking ass raped. And then it's like, but we're not in prison, we're friends, we're all like, we're 20 year old, with living in the suburbs, like, what the fuck are you playing, well, what is this? Anyway, the house has been sold, so it's three months left, it's mainly the second and third guy is okay, however, he has been used so much by these two, he's spiritually dead, he hardly talks, always in his rooms, just so they don't disturb him further, so it's two versus two in a way, huh? Christina asks, what kind of herbs do you use? For what? I use a lot of herbs. So, do you have something specific that you need? Or are you asking me, like, what are my favorite herbs and what are what are the uses of them? 